to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Be sure to check out the Mad Canadian over at the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery from 2 to 9 o'clock this Saturday, January 2nd, to get some of his delicious barbecue and some craft beer over at, again, the Finley Crafted Nano Brewery. If you can't make it out there, be sure to check out the great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to use the promo code SWOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by, you guessed it, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned, mom and pop, fair trade, organic, certified local coffee roaster. That's right. They're local, too. They're from Ohio. How amazing is that? Uh, what, what box? What other box do you want? Check. Veteran? Checked. Mom and pop? Check. Roast to order? Check. Got to get those fresh beans. Small batch? Check. Did I already do a check for Ohio? Uh, if I didn't, check. What else do you guys want? Oh, you, oh, oh, I get it. I get it. You actually want the coffee to taste good. Well, I can promise you this. The coffee tastes amazing. Uh, some of my favorites are the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, the Ride or Die, the, or the Cast Iron. Those are three of my favorites. Uh, those are three of their straight medium roast. So if you're medium roast, those three might be the way to go. And if you uh, are maybe just not sure which one you might like, they have a six pack of sampler bags. So you can try as many as you can before maybe honing in on that one or two that are your favorites. So you can check out all of that and more free shipping over $50 at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube and Discord? We got some live listeners in the Discord channel. Hope everyone had a good Christmas. Kyle, you want to, maybe you need to move the mic closer or just need to talk up one of the two. I need to talk up better. Yeah, that's much better. Coming in a little quiet. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit louder then. Okay. All right. We obviously don't have any witty banner for this portion of the show. So let's just rejoin our audio listeners. <laughs> We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right. How are you, Jared? I have no complaints. Uh, I'm back in the back in the house after a little bit of a road. No, no plane. Road trips to uh, just see some people. Not too many people. Trying to keep try trying to find a balance between tradition and caution this Christmas season, as I'm sure we're all attempting to do. So I uh, went ahead and, you know, saw the people that we needed to see and missed the people who we couldn't see. And, you know, I think that's just Christmas in 2020. And ultimately, it, it just sort of is what it is. And it, it could be a lot worse. Um, you know, it, it could be a lot worse. So Absolutely. I'm just not going to complain. Yep. All right. Let's go ahead and get into it here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about some basketball here, Jared. So okay, a couple couple game couple games since last we talked here, uh, Rutgers and Northwestern, uh, really good game. Both ga both games are really good. Uh, Ohio State was down in the first half and just had a monster second half, especially when yeah. it, at the very end went on a twenty to one um, uh, streak there to end the game to beat Rutgers eighty to sixty eight. Kyle, are, are we going to lose EJ Liddell? After this season, Oof. the way he's playing, perhaps, perhaps he's playing we're, we're not really good basketball. Yeah, we're not there yet, but it's it's maybe starting to feel a bit like it. Starting to feel maybe a bit like it. Possibly. But then you have another but then you have games like the Northwestern one where it's a game that they should have won, could have won, but didn't. 
just right. costly turnovers, um, dumb errors, dumb errors on uh, Ohio State's end, just too many turnovers, costly turnovers. I think at one point in the first half, Ohio State had, I think it was like eight turnovers. And of those eight turnovers, Northwestern capitalized on 16 points. So pretty much every turnover right. cost them a bucket then. Yeah. Something, something crazy like that. Yeah. And it's, you go on the road in the Big Ten against a Northwestern team that is roughly, what, roughly similar uh, as far as your, you know, I, I think the the Vegas line going into that game had Ohio State a very slight favorite, maybe like two points mm-hmm. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like three. So, yeah, it, a team that's, according to Vegas anyway, relatively your equal, you, you have to limit your turnovers. And you have to make your shots. And, you know, when you go on the road, you probably want to score more than 70 points and, you know, not hand the other team 16. Mm-hmm. Well, and I mean, you can look at it too. The it, it's, I don't want to be that person to really just call out one player. But, oh, boy. I mean, but it was just, it, Ohio State did lose by one point. Yeah. That foul at the end of the first half from cj walker cj walker a great player great yeah. player but that costly foul at the end of the first half that gave northwestern two free throws to end the first half to tie it up 34 34 you can almost say that that no. pretty much cost them but the way the basketball That's, works and all that it yeah it, the, it the, the what the score is affects how you play so you, yeah you obviously can't just subtract those two points mm-hmm. and but yeah but still, it's obviously mm-hmm. a game in which every single point matters and you don't want to just hand out points whether mm-hmm. it be by by ill-advised fouls or by turnover mm-hmm. yeah but still it's it's a reoccurring thing from ohio state uh threes Ohio State is just struggling heavily, heavily beyond the arc there. There's something re- something really bad. I'm looking up the number here. Yeah, they're they're like 30% from threes. It's actually it's not as bad as I thought, but the past few games here, they've been really bad. They've been shooting like 20%, 22% from behind a three, which is just ugh. Which, in, in all honesty, you, you beat Rutgers doing that, and you only lose by one to Northwestern on the road doing that. And this was a team that early on in the season, I was sort of thinking, is this going to be a live by the three, die by the three sort of team? Because in those mm-hmm. first few games, it kind of looked like that might be the case. But they uh, they found a way to stay in the games and you know win a game against a quality Rutgers team. This isn't football. This is basketball. It's a quality Rutgers team without a three point shot. So if you get that three point shot going again, then mm-hmm. it, you know, the team just then becomes that much better. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, I actually haven't even looked. <laughs> I was going to say, um, who does Ohio state play coming up here? They have do, 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 this Wednesday. Yep. Wednesday, they play Nebraska. And then next Sunday, they go on the road to Minnesota then. So home to Nebraska and at Minnesota. All right. I think it's enough basketball here. Let's go ahead and talk about some potential NFL news. Nah. NFL? Leave it. Nope. Leave it when I see it. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking rumors, on the nope train. Saturday night going into Sunday, even as we're recording here. Irving Meyer to the NFL. Nope. Yeah. We heard this even when he was at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. We'll continue. Anytime there's a job opening, college, NFL, Canada, we're going to hear, you know, I hear Urban Meyer's looking for a job. (laughs) I heard, I heard Urban Meyer's thinking about the Texas job. Yeah. I hear he's... (laughs) I, I, I hear that he's interested in the USC job still. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's interested in that Notre Dame job, too, even though it's not open and won't be for a while. He's still he'd come back for that Notre Dame job. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Actually, I, I hear I hear that he's going to take over Penn State. 
That's what I hear. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. 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 I, I don't believe it. No. And the, the big rumors right now is there's two teams that show interest in Urban Meyer. They pretty much told him that they need to know before the end of the regular season. So it's pretty much a week from now. Mm-hmm. And whether that Urban Meyer's interested in per Adam in Schefter, interview yes. or not. What's that? That Adam Schefter that said that. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And probably the bit, the probably the probably the program that's most interested is the one without a general manager right now, and that's Jacksonville. Well, Jacksonville and, potentially having the number one pick right now, depending on yeah. if they're going to continue tanking or not. Uh well, and also let's not forget about Urban Meyer and his his ties to Northern Florida. Mm-hmm. And as as I, and as I'm speaking here, they definitely are taking. They are losing forty one to seventeen. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, that's unfortunate. I'm or or not actually, it might actually be fortunate mm-hmm. as we continue to tank yep. uh, tank for Trevor. But yeah, the uh, it, it's it. Here's the thing, and I'm not I'm not dogging Adam Schefter for this. He's doing his job. But the just, report is always of- the report is always NFL team interested in Urban Meyer. The report yep. is never, not once, has it ever been Urban Meyer interested in NFL team. Mm-hmm. I would just really like to see that switched around at least once, because there is absolutely nothing about Urban Meyer that i have ever heard him say or heard people talk about him i've never not once heard anyone mention that he had any aspirations to go to the pros that that's something he was interested in that it just it doesn't seem to be on his radar and i don't know that he has the correct mentality for it because he's a bit of a control freak and you're not going to get that in the nfl Exactly. That's that's my whole thought about it. His too. big thing is recruiting, There's, and you can't just you can't some, just some recruit co- in coaches, the NFL. Some coaches are mindset to be college coaches, and some coaches are set for the NFL. It's just yeah. whether it's depending on how much control that you want. And Urban Meyer is one of those. He just not would not fit well in the NFL. No, and like he he can't recruit. He doesn't. He, I think he's always enjoyed sort of the fatherly family sort of aspect of being a coach. And that's not present in the NFL. Mm-hmm. It's it, it, not none of it. Not to mention he's a guy who really, 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 really hates to lose. And in the NFL, you will lose. You're going to lose and you're going to lose a lot in the NFL. Mm-hmm. This is <laughs> it's just what it is. Everyone's great in the NFL. You're not going to ever have some sort of huge talent talent advantage. The best team in the NFL and the worst team in the NFL are not that far apart when you compare it to what we see on a college football Saturday. Mm-hmm. From a talent perspective, NFL teams are practically even by college standards. All right. Uh, other news if we go back to ohio state one of herb street's boys zach herb street is committing to ohio state as a preferred walk-on yeah this would be his third son the Mm -hmm. the eldest boys the twins went to clemson uh zach herb street who is a quarterback uh has as kyle said committed to ohio state as a preferred walk-on if you do not know a preferred walk-on is you're guaranteed a spot on the team but there's no scholarship money that's that's what that means so he's going to make the team he's going to be with the team he's just he's with you know quote unquote paying his own way now of course i I feel like he's probably not taking out any student loans his father does very well for himself (laughs) but uh, he will be quote unquote paying his own way as a preferred walk on. Mm-hmm. Uh, leaving the uh, team, however, will be Mookie Cooper. Well, potentially his name's in the transfer portal. That's not that's not a signed sealed thing. You can put your name in the transfer portal and then take your name back out of the transfer portal. That's you know it, sometimes you go out there and you test the waters. 
and sometimes you end up coming back. Now, a lot of people I see in Mooka Cooper, if you don't know, is one of the four big time wide receiver recruits that Ohio State had commit a year ago. And I hear a lot of people, I see a lot of people saying why that's always, you know, whenever you see someone, especially someone as talented as Mookie Cooper is, because he is, he's incredibly talented and he's only been with the program a year or less. Mm -hmm. Why, why is always the question. Why? Sometimes when it's a fourth year buried on the depth chart guy, you you don't necessarily ask why you just say, Hey, great. We're we're happy that you're going to go get to play elsewhere. And once a Buckeye, always a Buckeye and all, all of that. But when it's a young guy, a guy, like I said, who's still who is not because 2020 has not used up a year of eligibility left or he's not yet used up a year of eligibility. Why? I mean, it's it's just it's numbers. I think Mookie Cooper figured out and I don't know where he necessarily thought he was in the rankings previous i think mookie cooper figured out that of the four freshman wide receivers who came in last year who are you know who spent their freshman year julian fleming and the other guys uh jackson smith ninjimba i I always by the way someone on youtube said there's no m in his name i'm trying my best by sloopcast standards i'm i'm not bad i'm not doing too bad ninjimba I I put an M in there and I don't know how to not and I'm working on it. I promise. Okay. Um, I think he probably figured out that of those four wide receivers. He was probably the fourth. And that's not Mm -hmm. some sort of huge failure. Those are four incredibly talented wide receivers. And I, you know, Mookie Cooper, if he does end up leaving Ohio State, He's going to find success somewhere. Don't yep. don't don't question that. He's going to go find success somewhere. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like he's very much like Jalen Gill in that way. Jalen Gill immediately found success at Boston College after he left Ohio State. I feel like Mookie Cooper will do the same thing. But you find yourself fourth among the wide receivers in your own class. Then and you, you see, what's see coming in next year, too. A, a amazing trio of wide receivers coming in who just signed. You see Garrett Wilson, who's going to be coming back for another year. You saw a situation in which Cameron Bob and Juice Williams, as you know, older members of the wide receiver room, got snaps last week against Northwestern and and, and Mookie Cooper didn't. And maybe it's a direct reaction to that. Maybe he thought with a lot of the wide receivers out that he was going to get some time and maybe he didn't. I don't know. I'm not inside the young man's head. I don't I I don't want to pretend like I am. But the point is, is that he's made an estimation of where he felt he was on the depth chart. He saw the wide receivers coming in next year and maybe is making a business decision for himself. And like I said, maybe he changes his mind. And if he does, that's fine. He's he's allowed yeah. to have a moment and he's allowed to doubt things and he's allowed to take or not take action based on those feelings. And like I said, if if he just goes, oh, God, I was that was that was an overreaction on my part. That was that. The, and he takes his name back out of the chair. Then we welcome him back with open arms. Mm-hmm. Michigan Bucknut says, I want to see more of Bob, more of um. Cameron Bob, the red shirt sophomore. I believe he's a sophomore this year. Yeah. I believe so. I believe he's I believe red shirt sophomore is correct. Yep. Uh yeah, I, I, I like him a lot too. I like Juice Williams a lot. I, I like a lot of the wide receivers on this team. Like pretty much almost anybody that's here. <laughs> uh, seriously, I like I like 100 percent of the wide receivers on this team. That being said, if Mookie Cooper does end up leaving, I also believe he won't be the last. Again, four, well, three, three insane freshman wide receivers, three more insane freshman wide receivers, Garrett Wilson with another year. And Ohio State already has really good relationships with some 2022 kids at wide receiver. Mm. Sometimes you just have to make that business decision for yourself and go someplace where you can get on the field, get seen by scouts and potentially get to the NFL because Mm -hmm. there are. You know, well, if they aren't good enough to start at Ohio State, are they good? Well, in this case, yes. 
they they might be good enough to start in the NFL, even if they didn't start at Ohio State. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's talk more about our state players here. Uh, Justin Fields. Yeah. Uh, finishing seventh in the Heisman this year. He only gets you know he only gets six games. Heisman's a stats game. He mm-hmm. only got six games, and then two of them didn't look very good. Now we can talk about his wrist versus Northwestern and Indiana. He he was just straight rattled. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he has he only plays in six games and he looked bad, e- even if one of them was by injury to some extent. And we're not exactly sure the extent, but one of those bad games could have been or was due to injury. Fact of the matter is, is that the Heisman's a stats game and he played in half as many games as some of the other quarterbacks and other players who are ranking ahead of him. And I think the second he had a bad game, if you, the only way you were going to win the Heisman with that many less games than, say, Kyle Trask or some of the other, you know, stat heavy offensive players this year was if you had a 100% perfect record on your schedule mm-hmm. and Justin Fields didn't. Yeah. Uh, Michigan Buckner asks what number was Bob wearing this year? He started off wearing num- number seven, but we saw him in the Northwestern game. He was number 18. Was it 18? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. I was thinking 13, but I'll, I'll believe you. Yeah, it was something like that. Because 13 is Guy Scott. That's you know what? Yes, that's right. Another one of the highly touted freshman wide receivers on this team. Yep. 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 All right. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Myers. Myers, a finalist for the Remington Trophy. Excellent. Not, not really surprised for how well he's played. <laughs> as aside, a well, aside from the the one game where he was having a bit of snap foo, but yeah, it, it, aside from that game, aside from that game, he did have a pretty good year at center. Uh, I don't know. It's I feel like at this point maybe they just stick the Ohio State guy on there automatically. Uh, it, it's it's just <laughs> it's hard because again it's only six games. Uh, the mm-hmm. the people doing their trophies are doing their best, and it's just kind of an impossible task this year. It is. Yep. It just just like anything here, whether it's um, finalists for awards, bowl games, uh, trying to figure out who's playing when, and all that. It's just uh, it's an almost impossible year to try to get this work in. And you know what? We were able to the conferences and uh, different organizations were able to get it done and two varying degrees of success yes yes all right now uh, one other no, you, you, one, you one other right. interesting news here it shows speaking of conferences here jared oh boy how pathetic yeah the coaches are in or even the media in in, in regarding to the big 10 are towards Haskell Garrett. Yeah. Haskell Garrett in the Big Ten was ranked third team Big Ten. Okay. Yes. He was then earlier last week. It was in the CBS, if that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. He was named a first team all American. Yeah. But yet third team in the big third team in the Big Ten. (laughs) Yes. Uh, go figure. Uh, Haskell Garrett deserved it. Um, yes, it's absolutely. It was a monster, thing I kind of wanted to talk about when we were going over the Big Ten. All, play, but it 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 almost feels gross as an Ohio State podcast to complain when one of your guys doesn't get first team because so many Ohio State Buckeyes do. It just it feels really sort of gross and privileged, but Haskell Garrett deserves all the credit in the world this year for trying to be a good guy on the street, paying a terrible price for trying to be a good guy coming back from that 
And then coming back from that way ahead of the schedule that anyone anticipated. And then on top of all of that, has an amazing, has his best year as a Buckeye. Yeah, I mean, the stats don't really show it. And again, six games, he's had oh, he's a defensive tackles, tackle. two two sacks, and a, a Batman touchdown as well. Yes. Uh, I mean, a defensive tackle, you're not necessarily, not very often going to have a ton of stats to show your worth. No, but the, the one stat that you, not fully, it's not fully put on, but it you can really look at this stat is, how many rushing yards you're allowing per game too. Right. But that, that can be sort of a team, but just this, as far as the defensive tackles at Ohio state goes and, you know, he and uh, Togi, I were the primary defensive tackles, both had great years coming into the year. We were real worried about the defensive tackle position. We we're like the defensive ends, all the defensive ends will be fine. And not to say the defensive ends were bad this year. It's mm-hmm. just we have a very, very, very high standard for what we want from our defensive ends at Ohio State. And they yeah. didn't meet that very, very high standard that we had grown accustomed to. It's not to say the defensive ends played poorly this year. They didn't. But we were worried about the defensive tackles coming into the year. And they outperformed the defensive ends something crazy. Mm-hmm. To- Togi yeah. and Haskell Garrett had amazing seasons this year. They did. Yes, sir. Uh, one other news here, Buckeyes related. <laughs> so Ohio- speaking of having high, uh, well, lost it. Speaking of having high <laughs> expectations uh, based on Ohio State defensive end play. Four Ohio State players. Three of them the defensive NFL, ends. The pro- made it to the Pro Bowl this year. And three of them three defense of them on that defensive line there. Defensive Chase- ends specifically. Yep. Rookie Chase Young. Joey Bosa, Cameron Hayward, and Marshawn Lattimore, all named Pro Bowl. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) It's just sort of Ohio State through the years there, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Especially along the defensive line, the defensive ends. Mm -hmm. All right, Jared. uh, Before we go into our next section, why don't we... Why don't we... Talk about our sponsors here. Absolutely. You want to go first or am I going first? Sure, I'll go first. Mad Canadian, Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, well, he was listening, but he got off here. <laughs> so he won't be writing any angry letters anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't, if you if you failed to get your um your special friend or even yourself uh, a good holiday gift, um you can go ahead and get one now. <laughs> you can go ahead and get one now over at the McKinney and Barbecue Company. Uh, it's never too late to get any of the great seasonings, such as the Brits Blend, the Snoring Heat, the Smoke Tube, or Kerry Steak, the Discord, Four Horsemen, the Mad Hatter. Uh, the Michigan Bucknut says the Kerry Blend is very good. The Kerry Steak? The Kerry Steak, yes. I think he meant the Kerry Steak, yeah. We either meant the Kerry out. Steak or the Brits Blend. Both are great. <laughs> <laughs> or the answer is yes <laughs> there you go uh check out all those great seasonings all 14 of them over at the mad canadian bbq.com that is the mad canadian bbq.com be sure to use the promo code sloopcast 10 at checkout that's sloopcast 10 for 10 percent off you or your entire order mad canadian barbecue company where he has your butt covered this episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class hand-roast micro-batch coffee roaster. Uh, every single order is fresh to order. You're not getting someone else's beans. The beans are not stale. They have not been sitting on a shelf. They are roast to order. Those beans are roasted directly for you. Uh, we talked a little bit about some of the medium roast. Let's talk some about the dark roast. There's the fierce uh, is a dark roast made with 100% Arabica beans. Uh, they give you the edge and the confidence to slay your day. There is the Rocco, which is available in both medium and dark blend. There's the Thor, which is a medium dark. 
And let's see, there's the drink from the skull of your enemy. That is a dark roast. That's traditional Indonesian coffee, edgier and smokier, uh, thick, creamy, chocolatey notes of cedar, tobacco, wine and spice. Uh, the fear of no evil is another dark roast. Uh, this one is actually a black roast. It is roasted to the brink of flames. It's rich, black dark and void of light the integrity which is the mainstay coffee of the iron bean coffee company uh it is um it's their like i said it's just their mainstay it's their flagship beer it's a dark roast makes a great espresso uh some i didn't even i didn't even mention all of the i've not i've mentioned a bunch of the coffees so far this episode i still haven't named all of them so you have an amazing selection you can get a sampler pack if you're trying to find that one that's just right for you. Or if you're trying to do a late Christmas gift, the gift cards are still available and you get free shipping over $50. Uh, Iron Bean, uh, maybe someone, maybe you wanted someone to get you coffee for Christmas. Maybe you were sitting around thinking, oh, I bet I dropped some coffee hints. I hope someone buys me some coffee. And, but then no one did. Well, screw it. Just buy yourself some coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Okay. Right, Darren, one thing that we have not talked about just because it is 2020. 2020. Bowl games. Because, because 2020. Big bowl games here. Um, I know this is one thing that we always enjoy doing every year. We always like picking the bowl games, making up new names, yeah. new sponsors, made up sponsor names. Yeah. For, and uh, these bowl games here. Between a bunch of the games being canceled. And the regular season butting up so closely against the bowl season. It just uh, was not a thing we were able to do this year, you know, because 2020. But we'll, we'll get her again next year. But Kyle, we are already three games deep into the bowl schedule. BYU defeated UCF. Uh, Liberty takes out Coastal Carolina. Shocking Dabo Sweeney. And Louisiana, <laughs> the Raging Cajuns, take out the University of Texas, San Antonio in the first responders bowl. But Coastal Carolina is better, though. I told you Dabo's crushed. Dabo is so crushed. All right. Uh, some upcoming games here, Jared. The Tuesday. I just I think now would just real quick. Now would be a great time to tell everyone our Clemson preview is coming out on Wednesday this week. Coming out on Wednesday this week is our Clemson preview. Yes. Not Friday, uh, Wednesday. No Friday, but Wednesday. Uh, Oklahoma State and Miami in the Cheez-It Bowl. Uh, yeah, the che- you mean the cheese Nip Bowl? The cheese Nip Bowl, sure. Or <laughs> or the, uh, yeah, we'll just go with the cheese Nip Bowl. Uh, yeah, Miami, Oklahoma State, there will be uh, points. Two teams who started off red hot and yeah. then just kind of Came back to earth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Miami's already won because King has announced he's returning for next season. So yep. Miami's already won. Good for them. Uh, we'll see them next year. Maybe maybe they'll have what it takes. Clemson coming back without ETN, without Trevor Lawrence. Maybe Miami yep. has a shot next year. Yeah, perhaps. And if Notre Dame is staying with the ACC or wants to go back to being independent. I I have a feeling it'll be the latter. Okay. Uh, Also that game, which I don't think anybody's really going to care too much. Texas and Colorado. Next. All right. Uh, Wednesday, the, Oh boy. How far, how far does your program fall when you, you're playing in the Dukes Mayo bowl. And I'm talking about Wisconsin. Wisconsin taking on Wake uh, yeah, Forest the, the bigger, Wednesday at noon. The bigger insult here is that they're playing Wake Forest. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, I don't. It, it, because 2020, I just I give Wisconsin a pass because 2020. Okay. Uh, Their Wednesday season night, was super disrupted by everything. Wednesday night, whatever the over under is, you take the over. Yeah. Florida and Oklahoma. Whatever the over under is in that game. You take the over. Yeah. Uh, this is the Cotton Bowl Classic. Uh, definitely, you know, one of the big bowl games. Uh, take the, as Kyle said, take, Kyle, do you have that? Do you, do you have that pulled up? Can you tell me what the over under is? 
Oh, I can pull it up real quick here. Give me one second here. I like I like Oklahoma in this game. Uh, and I and I say that knowing that Oklahoma does not typically fare well in the postseason, but I think that they're playing better defense now. And I think that despite a rough start to their season in which they were not o- up to Oklahoma standards, I do think that they've sort of found their footing and maybe in, they're rolling somewhere much closer to traditional Oklahoma now than they were at the beginning of the season for sure. And I almost feel like Florida's the opposite. I can sort of feel yeah. like Florida's peaked already. You want to guess what the over-under is? 76. 71. Oh, take the over. Take the over. Absolutely. All right, Kyle, what's next? All right, next game. Also at that same time, nobody's going to watch this one, is Arkansas, who's 3-7 and seven mm-hmm. versus TCU. Arkansas TCU. Yep. Next. All right. Uh, (laughs) We're out. All right. We're getting to January 1st here. The new year, 2021. First game here. Here we go, Jared. Georgia and Cincinnati. Undefeated Bearcats. Do do, do you have information for this game? What information do you want? Uh, I assume Georgia's favored. I'm curious. It's pretty much, much. It's pretty much a home. It's pretty much a home game for Georgia. Yeah, it's the it's Peach the Peach Bowl. Bowl, which is in Atlanta. Yeah, it's in Georgia. It's, a, it's not it's not definitely. Athens, but it might as well be close enough. It's <laughs> it's in it's in Georgia. It's in Atlanta. Uh, let's see. The over under is fifty. That's low. Very low. Very low. And Georgia is a seven point favorite. That's not bad for Cincy. Yeah. I, I, I take the Bearcats here. I give them a shot here. I'd give them a shot with that. With that. But Kyle's here. Kyle, by the way, you need to thank me for my restraint for not pointing it out on our previous episode, but I'm going to have to point it out now. I, I don't know. We're so we're talking about Georgia and Cincinnati. I Jared. won the slip. Jared, picks. Jared, we are talking just, about Georgia. I'm, and I'm just saying I won Cincinnati. the I'm just saying I won the slip picks. That's all I'm saying. Cincinnati has <laughs> Cincinnati has. More points per game, letting up fewer points per game, more total yards, letting up less yards than Georgia. Cincinnati has had a better season this year than Georgia. No one's going to dispute that. The thing they will dispute is level of competition. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, you can point out all of the stats in the world to tell me that Cincinnati had a better season, but I don't think you're going to change anyone's mind because I don't think anyone's going to disagree that Cincinnati had the better season. It's just a matter of level of competition. Now, I would love nothing, nothing more than for Cincinnati to just send Georgia home with the tail between their legs. I would love nothing more than that. Let me ask you this. If Cincinnati wins. If Cincinnati wins. If, if Cincinnati wins. Yeah, yeah. Will Fickle hang hang a national championship banner in Uh, a different stadium? I mean, if it helps get another recruit or two, go for it. That's how I feel. Get those recruits in, man. I don't, Keep stealing I don't think those kids would. from I Michigan and Michigan State and Indiana. Knowing Fickle, I don't think he really would. But man, you print those T-shirts. You you send them everywhere. <laughs> there, just just saying that, Dude, it's an undefeated season. There, you got you. You're Cincinnati. You have to do whatever you can to bring talent there. So anytime a kid comes in on a recruiting trip, you're going to hand them a, t- a 2020 national title shirt are you not gonna do that are you not gonna hang the banner are you not gonna yeah no no get 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 all those recruits in there to take a picture wearing a national title t-shirt mm-hmm. i maybe he you and by the way i agree with you i don't think fickle's the type of guy that would do that but i want him to be the type of guy that would do that i want that killer instinct out of a guy mm-hmm Next up here, we have, is this the only one? Nope, there's a couple of them. I think two. Uh, a Big Ten SEC matchup here. The Citrus Bowl of Auburn and Northwestern. Pair of cats going at it. Yeah, this is the Citro Bowl. Citro? Citrus Bowl? Citro? Citro? Citrus? <laughs> the Citrus Bowl. Uh, the orange bowl that's not a, well, the orange bowl 
it's yeah, it's just it's it's the cousin <laughs> of the Orange Bowl. Uh, Auburn and Northwestern here. Do, do we care? One o'clock on January first. What's what's the line on it? Just tell me what the line is, then let's move on. All right. Uh, the line on this. Uh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. It is forty three and a half over under, and Northwestern is a three and a half point favorite. Interesting. I like it. Western is favorite. A Big Ten team is favorite over an SEC team. And it's not Ohio State. <laughs> you always have to throw that asterisk on there. Uh, let's see. Alabama taking on Notre Dame. Uh, Kyle, does Notre Dame stand a chance in hell? No. 19 and a half points favorite. Wow. I'm taking Notre Dame on that. I mean, the slow, the slow picks are over. And a half. The slew picks are over, so we're not picking it by the, we're not picking it that way. But Kyle, the slew picks are over, and I won. But we're not picking it like that. But if I were, I'd be picking, I'd be picking Notre Dame because nineteen points is a ton. Sixty-five and a half is the over/under. That feels high. That does feel high. Uh, so we're we're going under in Notre Dame. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we will skip Ohio State and Clemson. We will talk about that in detail next week. Uh, those are both mm-hmm. on January 1st, obviously. Notre Dame, Bama at the four o'clock slot. Ohio State, Clemson at the eight o'clock slot. Why did Ohio State and Clemson get the eight o'clock slot? You might be asking because we all they didn't want the blowout game in in the primetime slot. That's why. Yep, absolutely. Ole Miss, uh, Indiana. Do we care? Another here is the second of the. Big Ten SEC matchups here. Ole Miss? Why Why is Ole Miss really in the Outback Bowl? Could we not get anyone better? 2020. I guess. Is that is that seriously? How many SEC teams did we have to go through before landing on Ole Miss? Good God. No idea. Uh, let's see here. What do you get? What do you guess is the spread here, Jared? <sighs> it's hard to say because Indiana doesn't have. Um, I'm going to blank on his name. I don't know why. They don't have their quarterback, Penix. Penix thank you. Uh, so that makes it really hard to say. Their their other quarterback, who I like, um, has only played one game so far this year. That makes it. It's just such a wild card. I have no you idea. Got Lane Kiffin. You got Lane Kiffin. Well, Lane Kiffin's wild too. But Indiana's such a, uh, I'm saying Indiana's favored maybe by nine, but it's so, it's six so hard. Six and a half. Six and a six half. Six and a half. It's, it's just so hard to tell because of the weirdness that is Indiana right now. They haven't played is, in a while. This, is, this they, is funny though. Just looking at the stats here, Jared. Uh, let's see. Ole Miss is. Scoring 40.7, letting up 40.3 points. Jeez. They are they are averaging 562 yards a game and letting up 535 yards a game. Those SEC defenses, man. Yeah. Indiana, don't you? It's it's just good. SEC is just good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Indiana is scoring 30 points, letting up 19. They are they are pushing the ball 358 yards on offense and letting up 360 yards on defense. Okay. So that's your that's your that's your stat difference there. It's going to be a really low score. Wow. The over or under is 66 on this. Give me the under on this. Yeah, but Give Ole me Miss. The under. Then you say Ole Miss was their over under was over 80 points just on their averages? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm I going to take the under, and then uh, Indiana is fifty. You're taking under the 50. under. I'm. Th- you got to think over, right? I'm going. I would go under with this. I, I think this would be a. I think this would be a low scoring game here. All right. Uh, I just yeah, I'm taking Indiana regardless. It's but it's just um, it's weird because of their quarterback. Let's see. Four o'clock on Saturday, the second, Oregon and Iowa State. Pass. I thought this would be an interesting game. I mean, I'll watch it. 
I'm going to watch it. I just don't. What, what are we going to say about it? I've barely watched Oregon this year. Iowa State's fun in a train wreck sort of way. And, you know, they're all a bunch of Ohio Mount. Uh, oh, my goodness. Um, help me out, Kyle. Weather teams. No, no. <laughs> a duck is not weather. And no sun card. A duck is not weather. Um. <laughs> Why, Kyle, the freaking Division Three Ohio team, Mount. Why am I blanking? I'm Mount not Union. sure what you're talking about. Mount Union. Oh, Mount Union. They're all yeah, the, the all the all, Iowa State guys are a bunch of Mount Union guys, so that oh, has me cheering yeah. for them. I, I think they're a very interesting team. Kyle was on that was on that Iowa State bandwagon early. Um, Oregon just Oregon was depleted badly by by departures early in the season i don't know it's just it's it's a second class it's a it's a pair of it's a second class bowl game with some third class teams it's Mm -hmm. i'll watch it don't get me wrong it's football i'll watch it and the yep and the last one here excuse me is uh texas a&m and north carolina why why is texas a&m in is the capital i guess it's the orange bowl it is the orange bowl yep Okay, that would explain how Ole Miss got into the Outback Bowl, I guess. Uh, let's see. This one is a sixty-seven over under, Jared. That's uh, that's about right for a bowl game. Defenses tend to fall apart a bit in bowl games. Uh, I I don't have a strong opinion here. It's I think both of these teams have been dramatically overrated this year and you know north carolina you just never sure which team's going to show up Mm -hmm. um i i don't know it's texas a&m has just i just for for i'm just gonna i'm i'm gonna go with the tar heels like i'm gonna root for the tar heels just because of how annoying Sure. We've been, we've been hearing the past few weeks from sure from Texas A and M fans and and all that too. So I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. No, don't. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the same reason why I'm cheering. Sorry, Austin, against Florida, just because Dan Mullen <laughs> is Dan Mullen. But mm-hmm. yeah, it, it is what it is. I, I don't. Yep. I don't have a lot of love for many SEC teams. Obviously. Yeah. But yeah, uh, come back on Wednesday. We'll talk about Ohio State and Clemson in detail. Kyle, it is time to jump into our Ask Sloopcast questions. All right. Suncar19 asks us, how do you pronounce A-U-N-T? Now, here in the great state of Ohio, we say ant. Now and I say ant as well. Yeah. Now, Suncard, you being a little more East coast a little bit more northeast e. Uh, I know you probably say aunt, and I would just like to say that phonetically speaking, you're correct. A-U-N-T really should be pronounced aunt. Now, to me, I call this a Dr. Seuss situation. Kyle, did you know that Dr. Seuss, his name uh, is not pronounced Seuss? Yes, I knew that. Yeah, it's it's pronounced. I don't know what it's pronounced, but I know it's not Seuss. It should rhyme with voice. So it's it's actually Dr. Soyce. Now, I know that I am wrong every time I say Dr. Seuss. Does that mean I'm going to change? No. No. <laughs> because honestly, like, uh, you, do you really want to be at the guy at the party saying, do you know it's actually pronounced Dr. Soyce? Oh, I was reading my kids some Dr. Soyce. What's that? Dr. Soyce. You know, Dr. Soyce. You know what I'm talking about, of course. You you don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Nomad, who is a new sloop cat. Yes, he is. Hello, Nomad, who has joined us as we are doing this live, Jared. Oh, hey, Nomad. Uh, He asks, and I think he won't won't stick around for long, though. (laughs) Uh, uh, I hate myself. That joke was too easy, and I hate myself. Sorry. I think we answered this in one of the previous recent episodes here, but he asked, is it possible to have more than one true rival? Yeah. Just not at Ohio state. (laughs) 
yes. <laughs> now we can have um, temporary um, like arch enemies, but not rivals. Yeah. So. I agree. Okay. Uh, he also asks if the if the college football playoff expands, should or does it expand six, eight, 12, 12 teams? Eight. I agree. I think it should be eight. Well, because think think it. about it like this: you do eight teams. Now, of those eight teams, you make six auto bids. Yeah. Well, because you do the the Power Five. Mm -hmm. they all get an auto bid. You win yep. the conference, you're in. Then you take the most highly ranked group of five conference champion, they're automatically in. Okay. Then you have two at-large spots. That makes eight. But that's an eight-team playoff. But if you take into consideration the fact that we have these auto bids... Now, the conference championship games become proxy playoff games because there's an auto bid attached to them. So, yeah. though, and in most cases, the loser's not going to get into the playoff. There's only two at large spots. So, it's mostly a playoff spot, uh, mostly a playoff game at that point. So, it's pretty much, pretty much kind of like basketball in a way. Well, basketball is different because even if you lose that conference championship game because they take 68 teams, you're probably, unless you were a bad team, you're probably going to get in anyway. It's happened a couple of times in yeah. recent years. Yeah, it, it does happen, but that's that's not the norm. No, in college not. football, you're probably, with only two at-large spots, you're probably not going to get in if you lose your conference championship game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Michigan Bucknut asks right now, Jared, they go to eight teams. Do they shorten the regular season? And I'm going to say no to that because they've already extended one game already without shortening the season. I think they'll extend it one more game as well without shortening the season because you're you're essentially just extending it just for a handful of teams. Yeah, You're not extending it for the other 120 plus teams. It's just a handful of teams. I agree. So they, they, they won't shorten the season. I agree. Um, Nomad also asks, should the Big Ten go after Texas or Oklahoma? Or excuse me, Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, when you're talking about, we talked a little bit about this in regards to Cincinnati a few episodes back. When you talk about a team joining the Big Ten, the Big Ten, you might not, but the Big Ten cares a lot more about expansion than football or sports. They have a very strict standard for who they're going to let in based on their finances, based on the amount of research that they do, based on their academic standards, based on what sort of facilities they do or don't have on their campus. The Big Ten takes a lot, a lot that you practically have to be an AAU member in order to get into the Big Ten. Um, now, Nebraska got kicked out of the AAU after they joined the Big Ten. So Nebraska is the only team not. But uh, Oklahoma isn't. And Oklahoma does not meet many of those standards. Texas does. The Big Ten would take... Texas in a freaking heartbeat. Yep. But Oklahoma, like Cincinnati, like West Virginia, like some other teams that like some other schools that a lot of Ohio State fans or Big Ten fans say, hey, this school would be a great fit in the Big Ten. They wouldn't be because football, football does not matter to most school presidents. It, it simply doesn't. And the academics or rather excuse me athletics doesn't make money now at ohio state it does but for most of the other programs most of the other schools most of the other universities it just loses money if you want to know what makes money research makes money research makes money that's how you get federal grants that's how you get medical grants research makes money 
And if you're not a research institution and if you don't have strong academics, the Big Ten does not have time for you. Mm -hmm. So it's Texas, good. yes. Oklahoma, I just have a hard time seeing it. Yeah. Um, ask some more question. Which is a better movie to watch while wrapping presents? Die Hard or Christmas Vacation? I'm on the yes, Die Hard is a Christmas movie team. I'm not necessarily interested in getting into that right now. But uh, Christmas Vacation, I think, is a top tier Christmas movie. That's that's it's just it's top tier for me. Yeah, I would go a Christmas Vacation because it fits more of the Christmas mood. Yeah. But yeah, just it, Christmas Vacation's top tier for me. That's an yeah. S tier Christmas movie. Let's see. Uh, Sun Card asks, what is the percentage chance the Buck, the Buckeyes can make Clemson go three and out on their first drive? Ten. I was thinking like seven. Yeah. <laughs> Low. Low. That, they'll, they'll probably have a really nice script put together. Ohio State's going to, Ohio State is going to do a, and I think this is, we'll get more into it on Wednesday's episode, but I think Ohio State's probably going to go more of a bend, don't break yeah. type of defense. Yeah. Go, go back and listen to our post Northwestern episode. Uh, we talked a great deal about how the defensive strategy that Northwestern used against Ohio State will likely be the strategy mm -hmm. that Ohio State uses against Clemson, mm -hmm. uh, which asks, will not lead your, to many three and outs. Yeah. Who is your favorite player of the 2020 team? Haskell Garrett. Yeah. It's hard not to say Haskell Garrett. I, mm -hmm. And it's just for the story, if nothing else. Absolutely. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that, that's definitely one of my ones that come to my mind right now is definitely Haskell Garrett. I mean, there's a number of other players, too, that you can probably think of, too. But I love Chris Olave. Mm -hmm. um, I like Pete Warner a lot. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of guys on the team who I really really like. But I think just the story wise, I, I, I'd go with Garrett. I'd go with Garrett. Yeah, I agree. All right. uh, let's see here. Um, do 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 do. For the weekly, this is. Um, oh, so one more from Sun Card here. When is the next Sloopcast tailgate, and what do I need to bring? Hmm. Well, uh, I. I don't think we're going to have the amount of vaccines out into the world yet to do a spring tailgate. Now, if I'm wrong about that, and if we're doing great by April, uh, maybe, but I, I would not plan on that. I would not plan on us as a nation, us as a world, having enough vaccines out and available to everyone that we're sort of doing a unnecessary get together in April. Um, now I hope I'm wrong and I hope we, and that would be great if we could do that, but uh, that would sort of be the first target date that I think we would gun for if we were trying to do some sort of sleep cast meetup. Mm. All right. Um, trying to think what else we got here. Uh, let's see. You want to grab one of the ones from young kids yeah he says here which one do you want to do here Jared? let's see he asks can uh can either of us drop bars and if so spit something no no <laughs> i'm 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 not the type of guy who uh can freestyle whatsoever <laughs> that's not it's not that's not a thing in my skill set it, it took me a while to really get down uh, the Mad Canadian ad read. So yeah, have you have you listened to us talk? <laughs> we can barely talk for God's sakes. Uh, uh, yes, I agree, see. Michigan Bucknut. Uh, for the for our tailgate, Mad Canadian needs to be there for the cooking. Are you, try and stop him. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> try and stop him. Uh, he uh, young kids also asks uh, for. For the weekly sugar, uh, for the weekly sugar bowl game pregame festiv festivities. See, you want me to rap? I can't even say festivities. Uh, Jared and Kyle should drop some lines, show us some skills. Yeah, no. Once again, uh, you 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 can't just ask a second. No, it's it's not it's not a thing in my skill set. 
yeah. the ability to think that far ahead in what I'm saying and be able to make rhymes out of it, not going to happen. No, it's just, it's not in my skill set. Sorry. No, it's not, not for me either. I'm far too in my head for that. I feel like that takes a certain, a, a certain meditative mind to just sort of let go. And I am not that person. Well, got a few more late ones here, Jared. All right. Go from, ahead. Ask, from Austin formation. Uh, let me put that in there in the notes here. Um, Austin asks us here, Jared, mm -hmm. Baron Fields, who is the most important Buckeye in this upcoming game? Mm. You, know, you know who I'm going to say? Maybe Pete Warner. Pete, I was, I think Pete we're, Warner, we're thinking... a linebacker, a linebacker to really keep an eye on. Or just Lawrence, because if, if you remember in the last year's game, they, they're going to need to contain Ohio State was was Lawrence's ability to get out of the pocket and get those first downs or even that long touchdown run that yep. nobody saw coming. Uh, I mean, I was I was thinking Justin Hilliard, but for all the same reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's trying to contain Trevor Lawrence's ability to run, I think, will be huge. And I think. It'll probably it's not going to be just on Warner or just on Hilliard. It, it'll be a it'll be a team effort, but mm. it's yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing. Ohio mm. State's going to score points. They just need to get the correct number of stops against Clemson. Mm. What is the number one statistic to look for in this upcoming game? Uh so like the biggest deciding thing and we'll take we'll take obvious stuff like turnovers off the board um to me i want to know you know this this you have two of the best quarterbacks to ever play college football in the game and i feel like the my answer to this is who has more more rushing yards per carry <laughs> honestly uh, I think the most interesting thing, at least going in Ohio State's favor, is the line play. I think Ohio State matches up favorably against Clemson along the line. I was I was going to say something similar, Jared. Yards after contact. Both te both teams have very athletic players on the offensive side. Yeah, and multiple players from each team have the ability to just break it mm -hmm. so really just yards after yards after contact there and especially what we saw from sermon against that northwestern game yeah yeah that could definitely be a key sighting uh stat to keep an eye on yeah i'd almost be interested to see i think there's like a stat for like how far was the running back past the line of scrimmage or where was the running back in relation mm -hmm. to the line of scrimmage at first contact. Cause I, as much as I love ETN and sermon and, and, and master Teague for that matter, I think that the lines and what the lines enable the running backs to do are probably far more important to this game than the running backs themselves. Because mm -hmm. I again, I think Ohio State really favors their matchups favor nicely along both the offensive and defensive lines. Yeah. And if Ohio State wins, it'll be because of that. That's yeah, a little bit last, of a sneak preview to the Wednesday episode. Yeah. And then one last question here. What questionable Buckeyes, Buckeye or Buckeyes, could you see actually returning for 2021? I think a, a guy to keep an eye on is Haskell Garrett. I, he may or may not be coming back. Uh, we already saw a bunch of players go through their senior stuff, going through senior day and doing all of that. I, my understanding is, is if you saw a player undergoing senior activities, parents, you know, with their all the social media stuff that they did for senior day with the parents that that basically means that player is leaving. Mm -hmm. So I think we already have a pretty good idea of who's leaving. We're going to see basically a complete turnover of the linebackers. We're going to see a complete turnover 
uh, along the defensive line in many cases, but we didn't see Haskell Garrett do that. So we'll see. Um, I, I, <sighs> I, I think I think the one name I'll be watching most closely is Haskell Garrett. I know I've seen some people start to there start to be a little bit of a, you know, Justin Fields, Justin Fields should come back for another year of college football. Not happening. No, not happening. He's a top five pick. If you're yeah. a top five pick and you're thinking about coming next year. Well, he has. I'd, he has I'd, be, I'd have you sitting down in my office and be like, look, kid, I yeah. love you. I appreciate you wanting to come back, but go get your money. Dude, it. He has two bad games, one of them because his throwing wrist slash thumb was injured. He has two bad games and everyone's like, you know, you should probably go back to college. No, he had he had one bad game and then another bad game due at least partially to his throwing thumb. Do I have to hold up the beer can again to demonstrate for everyone? Because his <laughs> throwing thumb was injured. Justin Fields is not coming back. Chris Olave is not coming back. I would, I don't think there's any going to, I don't think there's going to be any surprise returns this year, the way we got from, from Wade and from, um, um, I'm blanking on names. Kyle, let's just move forward. I don't think we're going to get any big surprises outside of, like I said, that, uh, well, and well, this is a thing we'll go over in more detail once the season's over. But I'm not, I'm not seeing any huge surprises as far as mm -hmm. people returning or leaving Ohio State this year. Yeah. But then again, I guess they wouldn't be a huge surprise if I was anticipating them, right? So that just made everything I said worthless, <laughs> which means it's time to end the episode, right? Any other yep, surprise questions? That is all we have in the notes there, Jared. All right, time to end the episode. Um, Make sure to follow us on all the things and you can find links to all those things at thesloopcast.com. For those of you watching us on YouTube, you can see my Twitter handle below me right there. Kyle's is right there. My finger does not travel over to his camera, unfortunately. That would be cool, though. Uh, come join our Discord server. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it, it really is a lot of fun. Uh, come join our patron. Kyle and I have made the declaration that if we hit our fundraising goal over at patreon.com, that we will turn the Sloopcast into a daily and week daily, a week daily podcast next football season. Monday through Friday, every day, a new Sloopcast. But we have to hit that fundraising goal over at patreon.thesloopcast.com. And by the way, whenever we hit that, if we hit that in April or if we hit that in May, at that point, we'll start doing two episodes every week. Even with it being the off season. So that's 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 the deal in season five episodes a week. That's the deal. Come hit the Patreon goal with us. Come be a part of the Sloop Cats. And if you're already part of the Sloop Cats, consider uh, consider turning up that. Maybe consider going up a tier. Uh, it would take a whole lot of people for us to hit that three dollar three dollars at a time. It's going to take a lot of people to get there. But if you're listening to this and heck, I think if something crazy like. A tenth of you listening to this. Went and, and did the three dollar that one out of every ten of you. As I think is approximately what it would take, went and donated $3 a month over at patreon.thesloopcast.com. That would hit our goal. So that's that's neither easy nor hard. Because <laughs> uh, a tenth is a lot. Uh, I, I, I've researched the statistics on the number of people who listen versus the number of people who actually choose to financially assist. And 10% uh, would be a lot. So. Anything you guys can do to help out would be appreciated because uh, we, we want to do that weekly show, but we, we really need to be able to justify the amount of time it would take to do that. So and by the way, we all, we just we're either have or er, in my er, in Kyle's case, in the process of upgrading all of our equipment. So we we also need to pay for that stuff. So it's, you know, come come help us out. 
Uh, and if you're not going to do Patreon, uh, make sure to check out the t-shirt stores. You can find links to those at the sloopcast.com. I am actually wearing a, this is a redesign of the old Canton Bulldog logo. I designed it myself. Uh, this is in the 7071 store and you can find that at 7071.thesloopcast.com. Uh, there's actually a bunch of those old Ohio league, old football teams, uh, a bunch of their, a bunch of stuff, both the classic design and a modern redesign that I did over at the 7071 store. So it's a way for you to buy Sloopcast merch without like, wearing podcast merch, which I realize isn't necessarily everyone's favorite idea of a t-shirt. It's like, I listen to this podcast. Well, you can just go buy some cool stuff that is just sort of generally like, yay, Ohio, without it being like a podcast. So that's just a different way. Uh, or you can just go buy our podcast merch too. I like it. I think it's good. So you can also do that uh, at either of those stores, either at uh, merch.thesloopcast.com or 7071.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, that's, I, I did way too much talking. Way too much. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, Nothing really. Just an, a very interesting picture that came up as we were recording here, Jared. Okay. Gene Smith posts a picture of the Buckeyes practicing in the in the Woody today. Okay. It just says another day of preparations in the books. But if you look closely, because everybody likes to look real close at of the course. picture there. Of course. And who's in that picture? Chris Olave. Chris Olave back at practice. I, we, we we knew he was coming back, right? We knew that, right? Didn't we? Yeah. Well, this is just more of reass reassurement. Reassure. To reassure. <laughs> <laughs> that Olave will be as of now will be there for the Clemson game. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing mostly positive or nope. Let me back that state. Let me back that up. I'm hearing mostly good things. I understand that positive can mean two separate things in regards to testing. <laughs> I'm hearing mostly good things. If, if you're an Ohio state fan, good things about where Ohio state is currently at with their testing and with their uh, in relation to COVID. So I'm, I'm just I'm not trying to say too much there. But I'm just trying to say that, you know, just generally Ohio State's in good shape. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Yep. All right. That's it. I got I got nothing else here. OK. Um, just spent, spent the weekend with some family, just a small like kind of like you did, just small group family activities and just kind of recuperating from the holidays and all that and getting ready for for the upcoming Buckeye game here. Absolutely. Um, yeah, here it comes. Join us on Wednesday as we we do that. We break down the Ohio State Clemson game. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyle. That's all for me. That's yeah, that's it for for all of us. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Cincinnati, uh, a former Cincinnati based, a Cincinnati native uh, his name is St. Lennox. He's a singer songwriter. Uh, he does a lot of interesting stuff. I'm a, I'm a fan. And he's, like I said, uh, he, he's unique. He's very, and I, and that's not to say bad by any means, because obviously I'm choosing to play him. So obviously I like him, but it's not completely like anything else you've heard. So just know that going in, know that it, you know, might just take you a second to, uh, calibrate. And I'm, I'm now over analyzing. I'm now over. I'm on, I'm, I'm Jared, shut up and end the episode. Oh, okay. Uh, so stick around for St. Lennox and for our, our uh, last ad reads. So with all of that being said, be sure to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is St. Lennox. What's up, YouTube? And Discord? Is, we, do we still have people hanging in the Discord? Yeah, we got Michigan Bucknuts still there. Hey, hey. If you guys want to listen to us record and get your live comments in on the show, uh, you can join our Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, only patrons get to do the live listenings. And uh, our, our Discord's a lot of fun, especially the private sections of the Discord. Uh, 
it's a little family we have going and I, I like our community. I like it a lot. And so if you want to join it, come, come hang out. The lowest tier is $3. There are higher tiers that provide more than, you know, more benefits. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, it's, it's like I said, it's a fun family. Mm -hmm. Interesting day at the NFL level two. Yeah. Browns lose, Bengals win, Steelers win. Oh, the Steelers come back? They did. They were down double digits at one point. Mm -hmm. And is that a second win for the Jets now? They're yep, just trying they to screw secured. themselves out of a quarterback? <laughs> well, out of one quarterback. I might, they keep winning. They might screw themselves out of the Well, fields. according to this, that they they are now... Secure the number two. Yeah, they they will ha they will officially have the number two pick, okay. no matter what happens the next game. Well, good for. I was about to say good for them. <laughs> Realistically, good for Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Trevor Lawrence going to heading down to Jacksonville. It would seem that way. That's not too far from Clemson, I don't think. Yeah, it's not too far. All right, let's go ahead and end the episode here, Jared. That's a great idea. Once again, we'd like to thank 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 Saint Lennox for ending today's episode, and I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a Ohio-based roast-to-order, premium small batch, veteran-owned coffee roaster, uh, roast-to-order co coffee roaster. That's what I was trying to do. Uh, all of their beans are fair trade certified, USDA organic it is a company based on integrity uh it's a company based on just doing all of the right things uh some of their more popular roasts are available in k-cup uh there are gift cards available free shipping over 50 dollars, and there are some if you find that one coffee that you really like you can save money by buying uh subscription you save a few dollars a bag on a subscription service. Make sure you get your coffee delivered to your house exactly when you need it. We went over some of the coffees. We talked about some of the dark roast. We talked about some of the medium roast. Uh, there is flavored coffee. There is the mom's carrot cake. There is an intense blueberry. It's the mint chocolate chip is also available. And if you're if you're up for an adventure, there's the unicorn. Uh, that's a flavored coffee. What's it flavored like? I don't know. Neither will you. They might tell you. Sometimes they tell you. Sometimes they don't. But it's it's from their R&D lab. It might be the next flavored coffee. It also just might be an R&D thing. <laughs> Who knows? It's the unicorn. It's an adventure. Uh, but it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's going to be a flavored coffee. Uh, and it might be the next big thing. You never know. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're not maybe feeling quite that adventurous, they still have the carrot cake, the blueberry and the mint chocolate chip, but they also have a ton of unflavored coffees for you to choose from. I talked about a bunch of them already, and there's even more of them. If you go on the website and look, I've mentioned so many different coffees this episode, and I've not named them all yet. So if you want to see the full list, go to ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian will be in, at, around <laughs> the Finley Crafted Nano Pick Brewery. your preposition. <laughs> on January 2nd, so this Saturday, again, Finley Crafted Nano Brewery from 2 to 9 o'clock. Be sure to head on over there if you are nearby to get some of that delicious barbecue from the Mad Canadian and some of the beer over at the Finley Craft and Nano Brewery. Uh, if you can't make it there, uh, you can still get some of the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Get one of the three uh, packages that the Mad Canadian has put together the Just Send It, the Sweet Heat, or the Whole Hog, which is one of each the 14 seasonings that the Mad Canadian has whipped up in his Mad Lab. Be sure to also Use the promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout. That is SLOOPCAST10 for 10% extra off your entire order. Mike Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. <laughs>